Hi guys, Brain the Squirrel, I am back with another video and today I'm going to be running through everything that happened at Extremish Rules. Now before I even watched the pay-per-view, when I actually posted up my prediction video, uh, one of my Facebook friends said you should have called it Extremish Rules. And the truth is, after watching the pay-per-view, I really should have because there it wasn't really extreme. Like, there wasn't much extreme about it. There was a few things that was like, yes, this is extreme, but apart from like the few things, that really was it. But yeah, with that being said, let's go into the matches. The first match of the night on the pre-show was Andrade Cien Almas against Sin Cara. It was an okay match, like it, it was it was a good match. It just didn't really feel like anything special to be fair. There's not really much I could talk about. Selena Vega and Andrade kind of played with Sin Cara a bit and Andrade ended up getting the win so yeah there's not much more that can be said about it. Next match on the pre-show card was Sanity against The New Day in a tables match. This match I felt was too short. It just felt like there was a lot more that could have been done in this match. It didn't really excite me. Uh, there was a couple of good spots like um, the double stomp from Kofi that looked amazing but yeah again this match kind of fell flat for me just because it didn't feel like it was on for long enough and there wasn't enough action or excitement in it. Now we get on to the main show and the first match that we had was for the Raw Tag Team Championships and it was the Deleter of Worlds against the B Team. No one expected it like everyone thought it was just running up like the, the B team were just like going on their undefeated streak and then it would end when they got the chance for the championships but no they won the championships the B team are the raw tag team champions it's unbelievable like both of these superstars are brilliant in the ring uh, and it's about time that they got some recognition but oh my god, the B team, uh, the Raw Tag Team Champions, uh, the amount of times I can say it to myself, I still won't believe it. It's brilliant, it's funny, it's going to develop a lot into big storylines and great storylines and I can't wait to see what happens in the future. Then we had Finn Balor against Constable Baron Corbin. Uh, this match again was another one that fell flat for me. Like I just feel like there was a lot more that could have been done in this match and it... It was slow and it just it just felt like it was there. It was just there. I mean Finn Balor walking away with a win is a brilliant thing, like he deserves the, to get these wins. But these are two top athletes and this match just didn't really feel like what it could have been. Then we move on to Carmella against Asuka for the SmackDown Women's Championship with James Ellsworth up in the shark cage. Another match that I didn't really like. It just shows what this pay-per-view really was and it was just a stepping stone towards SummerSlam and again this match just felt terrible. There was little bits with James Ellsworth getting involved which were pretty funny to be fair like James Ellsworth chucking stuff down and then the minute like he fell out of the like he opened the door and then fell out of the cage and got caught up. But yeah, it didn't really feel like a good match. That Like, the stuff involving James Ellsworth was the focus of the match. Which it shouldn't be, but it was. That was the focus. Please just get rid of him. I will say it in every wrestling video I make until they get rid of him. Just please get rid of him. The next match, I'm not too sure how I felt by the end of it all. It was the Shinsuke Jeff Hardy match. The good side of it is, like, you got to see a proper heel moment from Shinsuke. You got to see him going for the quick low blow and the easy quick one, two, three. And then you got to see Randy Orton return. Like, usually Randy Orton doesn't excite me, but when Randy Orton came out, it was so unexpected and everything that it just felt like a massive, massive adrenaline rush going through me. I was like, Oh my god, it's Randy Orton! So all of that was amazing, but these two could have an amazing match. I'm guessing they're going to be having this match at SummerSlam, which will be brilliant if done right. No more of this like, quick win. It goes back to what I was saying before. This pay-per-view was a stepping stone. That's literally all it was. 
Uh, one more good thing is the fact that Shinsuke now has a title, which he really deserves, so yeah, I'm happy with that. So the next match is the first match that I thoroughly enjoyed, and this was the cage match between Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens. Yeah, I, I said that I thought Kevin Owens was going to get the win, but I didn't see this coming. Uh, the offense during the match was brilliant because they didn't just make it all one-sided. Uh, that was a big fear for me, that they would have made it all one-sided, that Braun would have just completely destroyed Kevin Owens. Uh, but they ended up making it so that Kevin Owens got some amazing offense in on Braun Strowman and actually took him down a couple of times, which was brilliant. Um, but the spot at the end... Jesus Christ. Braun Strowman is handcuffed to the ropes. Kevin Owens is climbing out. And then Ke uh, Braun Strowman snaps the handcuffs, climbs up to the top of the cage and just grips. He literally just grips Kevin Owens and then puts him through the announcer's table from the top of the cage. That fall looked brilliant. The, the whole match, like, the way those two worked together looked amazing. And, yeah, I absolutely loved that. We now move on to, again, a match that I'm not too sure how I feel about. The Bludgeon Brothers against Team Hell No. Now, earlier on in the match, Team Hell No had been attacked backstage by the Bludgeon Brothers. And it looked like they'd maybe broke Kane's leg. So, it looked like Kane wasn't going to be in the match. Uh, but Daniel Bryan still went ahead with it and yeah it, the action looked uh, like really good but I don't know it just felt like a fumbled mess the whole match looked like a fumbled mess and I'm guessing we're gonna see a rematch at SummerSlam because Extreme Rules the stepping stone Next, we have a match that kind of felt blundered, and it was Roman Reigns against Bobby Lashley. Uh, the beginning of the match, it was just boring. Like, the, it was just completely boring. But then action started to pick up towards the end of the match. But the problem was, you just sat through a boring match that really just resulted in not much. It was nice to see that... Uh, Bobby Lashley won by countering a spear. Like, it showed Roman Reigns being put down by one spear, which I guess is kind of weird, because this is the guy who kicked out of, like, what, five F5s? So, yeah, uh, it just feels like a complete mess. Now we move on to the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, this was Alexa Bliss against Nia Jax in an Extreme Rules match. I hate to say it in an Alexa Bliss match, but the best part of the whole match was when Ronda Rousey got involved. Like, Ronda Rousey jumps over the barricade and just starts unleashing mayhem. That was literally the best part of it. Again, a boring match. It just felt put together. And... Mm, I can't really say that I've enjoyed a Nia Jax match in recent times. Bliss walked away with a victory, which... Which I like. Don't let Nia Jax hold the title again, please. God, no. No, don't do it, please. No. And Alexa Bliss is my favourite wrestler, so seeing her with the championship, amazing. I just wish the match was better. We know what this is pushing towards. This is going to be pushing towards Bliss versus Rousey at SummerSlam. And... Yeah, disappointing. Just disappointing. Now we move on to a match that I thoroughly enjoyed, and this was AJ Styles against Rusev. The offense between both superstars, brilliant. At times, you actually thought that Rusev was going to pull that victory, was going to snatch that victory and walk away with the championship. I was on the edge of my seat during each pinfall in this match. Uh, both men work together so well, like so, so well, which... Is, it's kind of odd considering the fighting styles are completely different. Like, completely different. But, yeah. AJ Styles walked away with a victory. And anytime AJ Styles walks away with a victory, you can't be upset because it's AJ Styles. He is one of the greatest wrestlers of this generation. Like, maybe even pushing towards one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I'm not even joking there. He's just brilliant. 
the only thing more you could really ask is that Rusev gets the, gets a championship now. Because if Rusev gets a championship, then all will be right with the world. Finally, we move on to the final match of the night. Not only was it the final match of the night, it was the match of the night. Dolph Ziggler against Seth Rollins in a 30-minute Iron Man match. Now, start to finish, this match was brilliant. So Seth Rollins picked up the first pinfall, getting the early lead, which, yeah, absolutely brilliant to see, like, just that quickness of Seth Rollins. Then he managed to go 2-0 up after that, but for the third point, he, he, yeah, he went 3-0 up, but for the third point, it was because of disqualification, because Drew McIntyre came in, and absolutely destroyed Seth Rollins. Like, just beat the living hell out of him. Which did, in fact, lead to Dolph Ziggler getting his first pin. It went on back and forth. Uh, by the end of 30 minutes, the result was 4-4. So it looked like Dolph Ziggler was walking away with the title until Kurt Angle came out. Now, Kurt Angle came out and announced that he wasn't going to let it end on a draw, so the match would continue until there was a winner. The next pinfall wins. Uh, so Dolph's there, he's pissed off, and he starts heading back towards the ring. But who's on the apron? Someone who had been ejected from the match earlier on, Drew McIntyre. Uh, that caused enough of a distraction for Dolph Ziggler to come in, hit the zigzag, and get the 1-2-3. So Dolph Ziggler walked away with the championship. But yeah, this whole match, the offense, the false pins, the the score ending on a draw, everything just felt perfect. This was an amazing match by, two, I would say by two amazing superstars, but let's be honest, it was by three. All three of these men put on some class fucking wrestling and yeah, I couldn't be happier with that match. Like 100% match of the night. Now, going on to the competition, um, we ended up changing it, me and my brother, because my brother actually decided he wanted to be involved, and he wrote down all of his, like, predictions, uh, and he said that if he lost, he would have gave away the £10 Amazon gift card, but in fact, I was the one that lost, so I am going to be giving away the £10 Amazon gift card. The way to enter will be by commenting your favorite match from extreme rules on the post for this video on facebook on the post for this video on twitter or the on the post for this video on instagram i will put links to all of my social medias in the description so you know where to go but yeah extreme rules all in all lousy pay-per-view it was a stepping stone towards SummerSlam, which i really did not like uh, each each pay-per-view should feel like their own thing unless, uh, unless like it's the pay-per-view before Wrestlemania I can kind of understand you using that more just to segue into Wrestlemania but yeah this just didn't feel right but yeah I hope you did like this video and if you did like it give it a like I want you to comment down below whether or not you think me and my brother should live stream our reactions for SummerSlam we thought about doing it for Extreme Rules, but we weren't too sure if people actually wanted to watch it. So yeah, let me know down below if you guys think we should live stream it and we'll probably do like a drinking challenge during it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you can always stay up to date on my content. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one.